Yeah, pretty uh, pretty phenomenal performance and a phenomenal result for you tonight. Give me an idea of just how important it was, how good it feels to, to get back and rebound like that. Yeah, oh, that meant a lot to me, man. That, that was probably the most satisfying win in my career. Um, like it was not just for myself, you know, like me, I'll, I'll do this regardless. Like um, that last fight, to me, I can brush that off pretty easily, all the, you know, physical damage and stuff. That's just something I accepted. So it's not, that's not a big deal to me. But the people around me that, that watch it, you know, family and friends and my wife and, they're the ones that, that I feel like um, they needed a win like that. They needed a big win. They needed, um, yeah, that was for all of them rather than um, for myself. Do you think after that last one, you think they were kind of worried for you? Or like maybe they were like, Dan, is it oh, like you, what if you genuinely care about something, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> you know, it was, it was very difficult to watch. Um, so, yeah, that, for them, for them. No question. The left hand was landing early for you. I mean, obviously it ended up being the, the big shot, but I mean, did you have an idea? Was that the game plan going in that that was going to be the one? Yeah, I just trusted in what I've been working with my coaches. That That's just all down to guys like, you know, my head coach Eugene and my striking coach Tristram. So that was, that's all down to them. I just took a step back in this fight and, and I just went out there, enjoyed myself, enjoyed my training, pushed very hard, uh, trained very hard. But yeah, just took a step back and my job is to go in there and fight. It's their job to, you know, do all the study and, and break break down my opponents. You talked about that ahead of the fight, how you had to change your mentality and your approach a little bit. So mentally, was were there differences tonight, like how you walked into the cage, and I mean, did it feel different? It did feel different, like uh, because stepping back for so long, I, I just appreciated. Even on the walkout, it just all came out. How, how much I miss this, man. How much I miss going out there and putting on a show for the fans, man. I, I just soaking it up on the walkout, um, and even after the fight, you could I feel like you could see how much it meant to me. Yeah, you, you want to be on the Adesanya card. Uh, give us the news, man. Why do they keep? They haven't announced the location yet. It's got to be in Australia, right? I mean, what's what's going on there? You, you probably know more than we do on the ground down there. You're telling me. I know more than you. <laughs> I don't think so, bro. They keep me in the dark. I got a big mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, who makes sense for me? Do you have an opponent? In mind? I think it would make sense for you to be on that card once they get it announced fully. But uh, I don't even know. You tell me who's in the top ten that doesn't have a fight, and I'll say their name right now. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I feel like I get another shot. I feel like this is back where I left off. I, I want a, I want a big name fighter. I want, a, I want a top ten guy. You know, if they're coming down to Melbourne. They need to sell some tickets. You put Dan Hook on the card against a top ten fighter. I feel like that, that makes it a lot of sense and that sells a lot of tickets. You Dan, got the, uh, you got the first knockout of the night. Do you think that that will earn you a performance bonus? They already told me that, bro. <laughs> oh, I'm 50 okay. grand richer. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, when you got in there with him, was there anything at all that seemed, um, you know, different than what you expected in there? I mean, I know it was a pretty short fight, but, like, did he do anything that you, you seemed to land very easily? Is, is there anything that he, he brought to the table or that you saw him doing where you knew you could land that big shot? Uh, yeah, he, yeah he's, a, he's a difficult guy to, to figure out. Like, he's a tall guy. I have a lot of respect for James. Um, He's definitely one of the best guys in the world, and he's earned that top 15 ranking. So I don't feel like it was easy to land the shots. I feel like um, that's just all the training, and that's all the stuff I've been doing with my coaches that just kind of, it just kind of all comes out. Dan, he mentioned that uh, you were the first finish of the night, and the crowd was getting restless. You fought a Texan. How did it feel to have the crowd cheer you? I mean, they wanted to see a finish. You got that finish. How did you feel when they were uh, behind you in there? Yeah, I think I turned them around in the in the uh, the post fight speech, but you know <laughs> these these fans they they come here to be entertained, and it's just not even something that I have to try to do. It's just kind of a a natural way that I approach the sport is to is to hunt the finish and, and look for the finish. So yeah, I, I'm happy that I got to put on a show for the fans. Um, you know, regardless that they were booing me before the fight, I got to turn them around a bit with the old. Uh, you don't mess with Texas. Yeah. I've had a lot of people saying that to me all week. So <laughs> <laughs> you've got a, you've got a great example in your in your camp. What what do you learn and what is it like uh, training with Israel and what are you taking from him and his mentality as as, as he goes and who's, who's still young in his career? Yeah, well, I'm kind of um, I'm like a real big skeptic. So you know, it always once I see someone else do it, 
then it kind of gives me like before there was no one from New Zealand fighting in the UFC and then I saw guys like Jamie Tuhunatua I saw guys like Mark Hunt fight in the UFC it made that connection for me and it kind of all clicked for me so now to see a, a champion from New Zealand it's just another connection so you and I can see it can be done and so I'm, I'm hungrier than ever to, to kind of pursue that goal so what all of I mean obviously the you go from not knowing where San Antonio was. How do you sum up the whole experience here in Texas? I love Texas, bro. I love San Antonio. I love it. No, it's good, man. It's been, yeah, I've been enjoying this city. Um, it's my favorite city in the U.S. That's not a lie. I'm not a good liar. So I think people will be able to see right through that. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it, man. Good Mexican, good barbecue. What more can you ask for? All right, I got your answer now. Ferguson, Iaquinta. Or Gillespie, if you had to pick one of those three. I feel like uh, Quinta is the one that makes sense, you know. Um, yeah, that, that, that name definitely stands out to me. Um, yeah, Iaquinta, October 5th. Meet me in uh, Australia. <laughs> Get him on a plane, huh? Does the loser have to give up their real estate license? We'll put that in the contract. We'll, we'll sign that. Toughest real estate agent on the planet, right? I That's mean, a good fight. It makes sense. It makes sense. One more thing on uh, Vic. Do you think he's a guy that cuts too much weight? Do you think he should move up a division? Man, those, those are um, probably choices that him and his team are going to have to go back and look at. Uh, I can't I can't from the outside look in. He's a big boy, though. He is a big boy, you know. <clears throat> they say I'm big for the division, but standing across from him, he, he's definitely a big boy. Making a celebrate tonight. Uh, man, I've been staring at went to this one taco place. I'm not a Mexican. Mexico. I, mean, I, was, I wanted it last night, but I was thinking it's probably not the best thing to eat after wins is Mexican food. You hear, you know, you hear the stories. So, yeah, Mexican food. I feel like that's the one.